So let's start off. Creating an account and a profile. Uh, a fair amount of you do have OSF accounts, but I'm going to walk through some of the steps in order to create an OSF account. Uh, and I'll walk you through what our profiles look like. So to start, this is if you just type in osf.io, um, that's all the way up here in this top banner. Uh, this is going to take you to your main page here. Uh, this is going to take you to your main OSF homepage. Now, in order to sign in, you're going to be looking up here in the top right hand corner. You're going to see a sign in button versus a sign up button. If you already have an account, obviously you would be signing in. And I'll show you some of the different ways that you can do that. Uh, but you can also sign up using these different methods. Uh, I'm going to start by clicking sign up in that green button. I actually already have an OSF account, surprisingly, saying that I work here. Uh, but there are three different methods for doing this. Uh, I highly suggest if you don't have an OSF account, uh, I would start with kind of more of a streamlined method, um, our basic method of signing in. Um, so all that would require is your name, your contact email, and a password. Um, Agree to our terms of service, make sure that you do review those before you get started, uh, and then check that if you are a robot. And if you are a robot, I am on your side. A little bit here. Uh, anyways, uh, that's pretty much the most streamlined way of signing up for the OSF. Uh, but there are other methods of signing up for the OSF. Uh, and these are also ways that you can sign in. Uh, these use external verification methods, uh, basically remailing methods, uh, in order to verify who you are, your login method, uh, and how you can come back. First one I'm going to talk about is your ORCID ID. Now, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, ORCID IDs are persistent identifiers for people. Um, they're essentially a code of numbers that relate to you personally as a researcher. Those are your codes. It's almost like a barcode for a person. Uh, you're able to take all those resources, so all of your publications, all of your data, and all your things, you can connect that back to one code. Uh, they're really great, and especially if you're submitting for grants or any sort of publications, anything like that to show your history. Uh, this is a great way to kind of link back to those methods. So. Say I'm going to use ORCID uh, to log in. I'm going to start by clicking the ORCID ID button. And this is actually going to take me to the ORCID website. As I said, this is kind of a relay method. Um, as you can see, I do have an ORCID account, but I can create one of those through their different methods. Uh, you know, sign in through Google, Facebook, whatever. Um, I just use my email and a password. Uh, but if I'm able to sign in through this, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to authenticate me through ORCID and it's going to send me actually back to the OSF. Uh, I am actually going to go back to our page on the OSF. I'm going to show you the other method before I sign in through ORCID. Um, now, going back to the sign up, uh, we also have institutions. Now, a little bit misleading. Um, this actually means OSF institutions. Uh, our institutions are paid partners. Uh, these are groups and universities and institutions around the world who have signed an agreement to work with us. Uh, they basically, uh, they're trying to aggregate all of the work for all of their resource members, all of their researchers in their universities or institutions. They kind of aggregate all of that work together. Uh, but that's a paid service to, that our team can definitely show you more information about in the chat if you're interested. But uh, one of the benefits of that is that anybody from those institutions can sign in to those institutions. Um, so one of the ways that I can do is if I am a member of one of these institutions, I'm going to click on that institution button and I can find my institution on here. Now, this is a great way of telling if uh, your particular institution is a member of OSF institutions. Uh, but you can scroll through this list and see if your group is on here. If it's not, um, then feel free to reach out to us. Maybe we can set something up for you and your team. and We can talk through what that looks like. I am actually an alumni of one of these OSF institutions, uh, Virginia Tech. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like on the other end. So I'm going to click on Virginia Tech and I'm going to sign in through Virginia Tech. Now, this is actually taking me to the VT uh, login portal. So it's taking me to their site in order to authorize uh, my username, my password, and then I can connect that back to the OSF. Now, I played around with this a little bit this morning, and I'm actually going to go with my ORCID ID here. And I'm going to sign in. 
And one thing that's going to pop up for me, because I've already created my account, is a two-factor verification. Now, I highly suggest that you do this type of security with your work, um, mostly because uh, two-factor verifications, uh, they make sure that you have extra security when it comes to your stuff. Uh, it only takes one person to log in when they're not authorized. Uh, but this sends a code basically to your phone um, through an authenticator app. Uh, and it's really important to make sure that you do have those options. So right now I'm looking at my phone. I am putting in my code. And I'm able to log in. Thank you.